Chapter 15 Burglars Despite the annoying onlookers and their attempts at humor, Nancy and her friends went on with the search for the child's royal coach. The boys worked with the tools they had brought until the water was riled and they could no longer see what they were doing. The divers gathered on the surface and swam to shallow water. Here they held a conference and all came to the conclusion that anything buried deep could be located only with a probe. Unfortunately, they had forgotten to include the underwater metal detector. We must remember to bring it along the next time we come to hunt for the coach, Nancy remarked. Anybody hungry but me? Bess called out. George answered, Yes, let's go back. Say, who wants to join a swimming race to our cottage? Count me out, Bess said. I've had enough exercise. Me too, added Dave, and slipped his arm around her shoulders. They offered to drive the car back. Nancy and Ned had to sail the Crestwood to their dock. Bert grinned and accepted George's challenge. In order for Nancy and Ned to pace them, they kept the Crestwood alongside the swimmers. First, George pulled ahead, then Bert. George is a wonder in the water, Ned said admiringly. She could race on a man's swim team any time. Nancy smiled. Who do you think is going to win, she asked. I'm betting on George. Ned heaved a sigh. I can't go back on my own sex, so I'll say Bert. His date was still smiling. But you're not too convinced. As they neared shore, the racers were pulling together in perfect rhythm. Their fingers touched the dock at the same instant. The two swimmers laughed. They climbed out of the water and went to the cottage. Ned turned to Nancy as he took down the sheet and secured the crestwood. We both win and we both lose our bet. In mock congratulations, the couple shook hands. Bess and Dave had been there for several minutes and had started luncheon preparations. Mmm, something smells great, Bert remarked, smacking his lips. Bess replied shyly, We're having snail soup and broiled grasshoppers. Do you like them? Bert made a wry face, as Bess knew he would. Then she said, Today's menu is cream of tomato soup, ham and cheese sandwiches, and watermelon. Okay? Okay plus, Bert replied. For me too, added George. As soon as Nancy and Ned were dressed, they came out to the porch where Aunt Eloise and Matt were talking. Miss Drew said she had a surprise for them. A man from the yacht club stopped here soon after you had gone, she explained. He extended a personal invitation to you both to enter one of the sailboat races this afternoon. How thrilling, Nancy exclaimed. He said it would not be necessary for you to let him know, Aunt Eloise went on. But if you can participate, be at the club dock by 2.30. The race starts at 3 o'clock. That's great, Nancy cried. Want to do it, Ned? I sure do. But first, I think we'd better slick up the Crestwood a bit. After her bath, she looks a little the worse for wear. He and Nancy went down to examine the sailboat. If there's any quick-drying paint around this place, I can give the Crestwood a coat, he offered. Everyone scrounged around the cabin and finally found an unopened can of quick-drying white paint. The sailboat was propped up on the shore. While Nancy wiped off spots from the sail, Ned rapidly sprayed on the shiny liquid. In a short time, the Crestwood looked like new. Meanwhile, George and Bert had been washing out the inside. Soon that too was spick and span. She looks great, Bess called from the porch. Lunch is ready, come and get it. They all were very hungry and ate every bit of the meal Bess had prepared. Then Nancy and Ned went to change into white shirts and shorts. Good luck, Matt said as they left the porch. We'll drive around to the other side of the lake and watch the race. The group went down to the dock, and the Crestwood was put in the water. As Nancy and Ned were about to set off, Aunt Eloise said, Wait a minute. I forgot to give you the paper the man left which will identify you as entrance in the race. 
I'll get it, Bess offered. Where is the paper? Miss Drew said the envelope was on the bureau in her room, next to her pocketbook. Nancy spoke up. I really ought to have my sunglasses with me. Bess, would you mind bringing them also? They're in my handbag. Bess hurried toward the cabin and disappeared inside. She was gone several minutes, and the others wondered why she was taking so long. Aunt Eloise remarked, The paper was easy to find. She had barely said this when Bess appeared at the doorway. She cried out at the top of her voice, Come quickly! We've been robbed! Everyone was stunned. Nancy and Ned leaped off the Crestwood and followed the others, who were already rushing across the dock and up to the porch. Your bag is gone, Aunt Eloise, Bess told her. Nancy's too. What? What? The group chorused. George made a beeline for her room. At first glance, nothing looked disturbed. But when she yanked open the bureau drawer, she saw that both Bess's purse and her own were missing. This is terrible, George thought angrily. Upon closer examination, she reported that the fleet burglar or burglars had rifled various letters and other papers in the drawer. Just then, Dave came from the boys' bedroom. Somebody's been through Matt's suitcase, he exclaimed. Everyone agreed that the intruder must have been hunting for something other than money. What could it have been? One thing is certain, Matt remarked. The thief or thieves have been casing this place. Otherwise, they never could have done such a complete job so quickly. Dave hurried up the path to the road and looked up and down, but there was no one in sight, and no car except the ones that belonged to Nancy and to Ned. At least they weren't stolen, Dave said to himself. Finally, everyone gathered in the living room. Nancy glanced at her wristwatch. Goodness, she exclaimed. Ned, if we don't leave at once, we'll miss the race. The two dashed out to the porch, then stood in stupefied amazement. Their sailboat was gone. By this time, the others had followed them outside. But instead of waving them to victory, they too stared unbelievingly. George was the first to speak. She cried out, What a horrible trick! I'll bet the same person or persons who robbed our cabin took that sailboat. Her friends agreed. Nancy had been very quiet. Not only was she disappointed, but extremely worried. Her Aunt Eloise had important personal items in her handbag, which she did not want to lose. Credit and charge account cards could easily be used by some stranger, and her driver's license also. Nancy was alarmed about the loss of her own driver's license. The thief might have been the girl who resembled her and would use her license. Matt offered to drive into town and report the loss to the police. He said nothing was missing from his suitcase. After the group had made a list of stolen articles, Matt went off with it. Nancy was thinking, Oh, if Yo would only come along now, he might help us. But I suppose he's down watching the races. As if in answer to her wish, however, within ten minutes, Yo pulled up to the dock of Mirror Bay Bidewee. I came to see what happened to you, he said. I heard you were going to be in the race, but you didn't come. Quickly, the situation was explained to him. Stolen, he cried out. Well, we'll just overtake that thief. Climb in here. Nancy and Ned got aboard, and the search began. They had no idea which way to go. Yo, said Nancy, if you were trying to hide a sailboat on this lake, what spot would you pick? He answered instantly where Shadow Brook empties into the lake. Then let's go there, she suggested. Yo proved to be right. When they reached the brook, there was the half-sunken Crestwood. But the sleek craft did not look as it had when Nancy and Ned were ready to set sail. The sheet was torn, and the craft was covered with mud. Some people's idea of a joke is pretty foul, Yo spoke up. I don't know whether we can get this afloat or not. We can try, Nancy said. The three of them waded into the muddy water. In moments, it had turned their white attire brown. 
With Yo's assistance, they tugged and yanked, first on one end of the sailboat, then the other. The trio finally righted the crestwood, but it could not float with the heavy mud and debris in it. Using their hands as shovels, they finally cleared away most of the muck. I'll tow you, Yo said. The rope was attached to the back of the motorboat. Then Nancy climbed in beside Yo, and Ned sat in the rear of the craft to keep the sailboat from bumping into the outboard motor. The group finally reached the Bidawi dock. Their friends had been watching for them and now rushed down to hear the story. Everyone thanked Yo so profusely, he became very much embarrassed. He said over and over again, Oh, that's all right. I'm just sorry you all missed the race. He went off and Nancy and Ned changed into swimsuits for a dip in the bay. While the couple was in the water, they saw Miss Armitage arrive and go inside the cottage. For this reason, Nancy and Ned took only a short swim. Then they pulled themselves up onto the dock and wrapped big towels around them. The next moment, the caller stepped onto the porch with Bess and they waved to her. Bess called down excitedly. Nancy and Ned, come up here quick. Wait until you hear what happened to Miss Armitage. End of chapter 15.